chapter 6, The Master of the Senses, from the first canto, 8th chapter, 23rd text of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Rishikesha Kalena Devaki Kamsena Rudati Charam Sucharpita Vimochitaham Cha Sahatmaja Vibo Tvayaiva Natena Muhur Vipadganat Translation O Rishikesh, Master of the Senses and Lord of Lords, you have released your mother Devaki who is long imprisoned and distressed by the envious King Kamsa, and me and my children from a series of constant dangers. <laughs> Purport by Srila Prabhupada Devaki, the mother of Krishna and sister of King Kamsa, was put into prison along with her husband, Vasudeva, because the envious king was afraid of being killed by Devaki's eighth son, Krishna. The king killed all the sons of Devaki who were born before Krishna, but Krishna escaped the danger of child slaughter because he was transferred to the house of Nanda Maharaj, Lord Krishna's foster father. Kunti Devi, along with her children, was also saved from a series of dangers. But Kunti Devi was shown far more favor because Lord Krishna did not save the other children of Devaki, whereas he saved the children of Kunti Devi. This was done because Devaki's husband, Vasudeva, was living, whereas Kunti Devi was a widow, and there was none to help her except Krishna. The conclusion is that Krishna bestows more favor upon a devotee who is in greater dangers. Sometimes he puts his pure devotees in such dangers because in that condition of helplessness, the devotee becomes more attached to the Lord. The more the attachment is there for the Lord, the more success is there for the devotee. Devaki, the devotee who became the mother of Krishna, was not an ordinary woman. After all, who can become the mother of the Supreme Personality of Godhead? Krishna agrees to become the son only of the most advanced devotee. In their previous lives, Devaki and her husband underwent severe austerities. And when Krishna therefore appeared before them, wanting to give them a benediction, they told him that they wanted a son like God. But where can there be another person equal to God? That is not possible. God is a sammordva. That is, no one can be equal to or greater than him. There cannot be any competition. One cannot say, I am God, you are God, he is God, we are all God. No. One who says this is a dog, not God, for God is great and he has no competitor. No one is equal to him, everyone is lower. Ekale Ishvara Krishna Ara Sabha Vritya The only master is Krishna, God, and everyone else is his servant, including even great demigods like Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva, not to speak of others. Shiva Virinchi Nutam. In the Shastra, the Vedic scriptures, it is said that Lord Krishna is offered respect even by Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma, the topmost demigods. Above the
the human beings, there are demigods. As we human beings are above the lower animals, above us there are demigods, the most important of whom are Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva. Lord Brahma is the creator of this universe. Lord Shiva is its destroyer. And Lord Vishnu, who is Krishna himself, is its maintainer. For the maintenance of this material world, there are three gunas, or modes of material nature. Sattva guna, the mode of goodness. Rajoguna, the mode of passion. And Tamo guna, the mode of ignorance. Lord Vishnu, Lord Brahma, and Lord Shiva have each taken charge of one of these modes. Lord Vishnu of Sattva guna, Lord Brahma of Rajoguna, and Lord Shiva of Tamoguna. Yet these three controllers are not under the influence of the gunas, just as the superintendent of a jail is not a prisoner but the controlling officer, so Lord Shiva, Lord Vishnu, and Lord Brahma control these three gunas and are not under the control of the gunas. But above all others, the supreme controller is Krishna, who is known as Rishikesha. The word Rishika means senses. We are enjoying our senses, but ultimately the controller of the senses is Krishna. Consider my hand, for example. I claim, this is my hand. I can fight you with a good fist. I am very much proud, but I am not the controller. The controller is Krishna, because if he withdraws my hand's power to act, the hand will be paralyzed. Although I claim it is my hand and I shall use it, when it is paralyzed I cannot do anything. Therefore I should understand that although I possess this hand by the grace of Krishna, I am not its controller. This is Krishna consciousness. A sane man will think, if this hand is ultimately controlled by Krishna, then it is meant for Krishna. This is a common sense understanding. I claim, this is my hand, this is my leg, this is my ear. Even a child will speak this way. If we ask a child, what is this? He will say, it is my hand. But regardless of what we claim, actually it is not our hand. It is given to us. Because I wanted to use my hand in so many ways, Krishna has given it to me. All right, take this hand and use it. So it is a gift from Krishna. And therefore a sane man always consciously thinks, Whatever I have in my possession, beginning with this body and my senses, is actually not mine. I have been given all these possessions to use, and if everything ultimately belongs to Krishna, why not use everything for Krishna? This is intelligence, and this is Krishna consciousness. Everyone is part and parcel of Krishna. Mamai Vamsho Jiva Loke Jiva Bhuta. And therefore, everyone's senses are also Krishna's. When we use the senses for Krishna's service, we attain the perfection of life. Therefore, Rishikena Rishikesha Sevanam Bhaktir Uchite. When by our senses, Rishikena, we serve Rishikesha, the real master of the senses, that service is called bhakti. Rishikesha Sevanam, not Rishika Sevanam, service to the Supreme Master of the Senses, not to the senses themselves. When we use our senses for sense gratification, we are in maya, illusion. But when we use our senses for the gratification of the Master of the Senses, that service is called bhakti. In this material world, everyone is generally using his senses for sense gratification.
that is maya, illusion, and that is the cause of one's bondage. But when one comes to Krishna consciousness, when one becomes purified and understands that these senses are actually meant for satisfying Krishna, then he is a liberated person, Mukta Purusha. Iha yasya harer dasye karmana manasa gira nikalas vapya vasta su jivan mukta sa uchite. Which means, quote, a person who acts in the service of Krishna with his body, mind, intelligence, and words is a liberated person, even within the material world. Unquote. One should come to understand. My senses are meant to serve the master of the senses, Rishikesha. The master of the senses is sitting within everyone's heart. In the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 15, text 15, the Lord says, Sarvasya chaham redi sani vishto, which means, quote, I am, I am seated in everyone's heart, unquote. Mataha smritir jnanam apohanam cha, which means, quote, and from me come remembrance, knowledge, and forgetfulness, unquote. Krishna is so merciful that if we want to use our senses in a certain way, he will give us the chance to do so. The senses are not ours. They are Krishna's, but Krishna gives us the opportunity to use them according to our desires. For example, each of us has a tongue, and suppose we want to eat stool. We may say, Krishna, I want to taste stool. And Krishna will say, yes, take this body of a hog and eat stool. The master is present, Krishna. He will give us an appropriate body and remind us. My dear living entity, you wanted to eat stool, now you have the proper body in which to do so. Similarly, if one wants to become a demigod, Krishna will give one a chance to do that also. There are 8,400,000 forms of life, and if one wants to engage one's senses in a particular type of body, Krishna will give one the chance. Come on, here is the body you want take it. But eventually, one will become exasperated by using one's senses. Ultimately, one will become senseless. Therefore, Krishna says, Sarva dharman parityajya ma me kam sharanam brja. Don't act like this. Your senses are meant for serving me. You are misusing your senses and are therefore being entrapped in different types of bodies. Therefore, to get relief from this tedious business of accepting one body and then giving it up to accept another, and again another in continued material existence, just give up this process of sense gratification and surrender unto me. Then you will be saved. This is Krishna Consciousness. At the present moment, our senses are contaminated. I am thinking, I am an American, so my senses should be used for the service of my country, my society, my nation. Or else I am thinking, I am Indian, and my senses are Indian senses, and therefore they should be used for India. In ignorance, one does not know that the senses belong to Krishna. Instead, one thinks that one has American senses, Indian senses, or African senses. This is called maya, illusion. In material life, the senses are covered by designations such as American, Indian, and African. But when our senses are no longer contaminated by all these designations, sarvopadhi, vinir muktam, Bhakti begins. To think, I am an American, why shall I take to Krishna consciousness and worship a Hindu god, is foolishness. 
If one thinks, I am Muhammadan, I am Christian, or I am Hindu, one is in illusion. One must purify the senses so that one can understand, I am a spirit soul, and the supreme spirit soul is Krishna. I am part and parcel of Krishna, and therefore it is my duty to serve Krishna. When one thinks in this way, one immediately becomes free. At that time, one is no longer American, Indian, African, this or that. At that time, one is Krishnaized or Krishna conscious. That is what is wanted. Therefore, Kunti Devi says, my dear Krishna, Rishikesha, you are the master of the senses. For sense gratification, we have fallen into this material condition and are suffering in different varieties of life. Because this is the material world, even Krishna's mother was put into suffering. Devaki was so advanced that she became the mother of Krishna, but still she was put into difficulties by her own brother, Kansa. That is the nature of this material world. The living entities in this world are so jealous that if one's personal interest is hampered, one will immediately be ready to give trouble to others, even to one's nearest relatives. Kala means jealous. This material world is a world of jealousy and envy. I am envious of you, and you are envious of me. The Krishna consciousness movement, however, is meant for one who is no longer jealous or envious. By becoming free from jealousy and envy, one becomes a perfect person. Dharma projita kaitavo tra paramo nirmatsara nam satam, which is from the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 1, Text 2. Those who are jealous and envious are within this material world, and those who are not are in the spiritual world. Therefore, we can test ourselves. If we are jealous or envious of our friends or other associates, we are in the material world. And if we are not jealous, we are in the spiritual world. There need be no doubt of whether we are spiritually advanced or not. We can test ourselves. Bhakti parishanubhavo viraktir anyatra cha From the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 11, Chapter 2, Text 42 when we eat, we can understand for ourselves whether our hunger is satisfied. We don't have to take a certificate from others. Similarly, we can test for ourselves whether we are in the material world or the spiritual world. If we are jealous or envious, we are in the material world. And if we are not, we are in the spiritual world. If one is not jealous, one can serve Krishna very well, because jealousy and envy begin with being jealous of Krishna. For example, some philosophers think, Why should Krishna be God? I am also God. This is the beginning of material life, to be envious of Krishna. 
Why should Krishna be the enjoyer, they think? I shall also be the enjoyer. Why should Krishna enjoy the gopis? I shall become Krishna and make a society of gopis and enjoy. This is Maya. No one but Krishna can be the enjoyer. Krishna therefore says in Bhagavad Gita, Bhoktaram Yajna, I am the only enjoyer. If we supply ingredients for Krishna's enjoyment, we attain the perfection of life. But if we want to imitate Krishna, thinking, I shall become God and enjoy like Him, then we are in Maya. Our natural position is to provide enjoyment for Krishna. In the spiritual world, for example, Krishna enjoys and the gopis, the transcendental cowherd girls, supply the ingredients for Krishna's enjoyment. This is bhakti. Bhakti is a relationship between master and servant. The servant's duty is to serve the master, and the master supplies whatever the servant needs. Nityo nityanam chetanas chetanam eko bahunam yo vidadati kaman from the Kata Upanishad 2 2 13. The Vedic literature informs us that Krishna can supply all the necessities for one's life. There is no scarcity and no economic problem. We simply have to try to serve Krishna and then everything will be complete. If Krishna desires, there may be ample supplies. In America, for example, there is an ample supply of everything needed, although in other countries this is not so. For instance, when I went to Switzerland, I saw that everything there is imported. The only thing supplied locally is snow. This is all under Krishna's control. If one becomes a devotee, one will be amply supplied with food. And if one does not become a devotee, one will be covered with snow. Everything is under Krishna's control, so actually there is no scarcity. The only scarcity is a scarcity of Krishna consciousness. Of course, the world is full of dangers, but Kunti Devi says, Because Devaki is your devotee, you saved her from the distresses imposed upon her by her envious brother. As soon as Devaki's brother heard that his sister's eighth son would kill him, he was immediately ready to kill Devaki. But Devaki's husband pacified him. It is the duty of a husband to protect his wife, and therefore Devaki's husband said, My dear brother-in-law, why are you envious of your sister? After all, your sister will not kill you. It is her son who will kill you. That is the problem. So I shall deliver all the sons to you, and then you may do whatever you like with them. Why should you kill this innocent, newly married girl? She is your younger sister, and you should protect her, just as you would protect your daughter. Why should you kill her? In this way, he placated Kamsa, who believed Vasudeva's word that he would bring all the sons, so that if Kamsa wanted, he could kill them. Vasudeva thought, Let me save the present situation. After all, if Kamsa later gets a nephew, he may forget this envy. But Kamsa never forgot. Instead, he kept Devaki and Vasudeva in prison for a long time, Atichiram, and killed all their sons. Finally, Krishna appeared and saved Vasudeva and Devaki. Therefore, we must depend on Krishna, like Devaki and Kunti. After Kunti became a widow, the envious Dhritarashtra was always planning ways to kill her sons, the five Pandavas. He thought, Because by chance I was born blind, I could not inherit the throne of the kingdom, 
and instead it went to my younger brother. Now he is dead, so at least my sons should get the throne. This is the materialistic propensity. One thinks, I shall be happy, my sons will be happy, my community will be happy, my nation will be happy. This is extended selfishness. No one is thinking of Krishna and how Krishna will be happy. Rather, everyone is thinking in terms of his own happiness. How shall I be happy? How will my children, my community, my society, and my nation be happy? Everywhere we shall find this. Everyone is struggling for existence, not thinking of how Krishna will be happy. Krishna consciousness is very sublime. We should try to understand it from Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita and try to engage our senses for the service of the master of the senses, Rishikena Rishikesha Sevanam. Then we shall actually be happy.